Okay, welcome back to another MoTeC webinar. My name's Pete Swinney and today's subject is configuring a nine position switch for driver compensations. For the purpose of this webinar, we'll be obviously configuring the switch into an M800 ECU. So topics for today is why would you want to do this? We'll explore the different possibilities in some short detail. Uh, how to wire the switch, the ECU setup and calibration of the switch, and some examples of things that we can do uh, with, with that switch. We'll just go back a screen. This is a picture of the one that you can buy from MoTeC. It's effectively a, a switch that has nine, in fact, ten different positions. And at each position, there is a different resistance. Uh, we feed a voltage into one of the pins and a different voltage comes out of the signal pin depending on which number you, you position the switch at. It's almost identical to something like a throttle position sensor or a MAP sensor other than the fact that you can put it in set locations and get uh, ex precise voltages sent to the ECU so we can have them configured to do um, precise things such as remove ignition or add ignition and things like that. So you can make your own nine position switch if you want. Uh, you can buy ours, which has all got all the nice uh, resistors and everything made uh, to last. Uh, the options are many. All right, so why would you want to use a nine position switch? Uh, main reason is it's, it, it's a driver adjustable tool. This thing would typically be mounted, as you might see on Formula One, on the steering wheel. Could be mounted on the dash. Uh, depending on what you're using for your vehicle, boat, jet ski, uh, bike, whatever it is you've got. So in most cases, we would have the, the switch, the rotary switch, uh, within the driver's reach so that they could put it on any given position at any particular point that they wanted to change something about the ECU tune. What sort of things would we use this for? Uh, one of the initial ones is boost control. Um, we can ask for different levels of boost depending on the numbers on the switch. So we can have low boost uh, or nine, in fact, different levels of boost. We could also just use it for ignition. We could maybe use it for three different fuels that we might want to use. We might have a 87 octane, 91 octane, 98 octane, maybe four different levels, 102 race fuel and a C16 race fuel. So there's five or six different uh, levels of fuel, although often if you're changing a fuel, you'll be changing, um, you know, that's a physical thing that you'll do, and at that time you might send a, a dedicated tune-up for that, but sometimes you can may want to add or subtract ignition. Same for fuel, add or subtract fuel, uh, same for drive-by-wire adjustment. So a drive-by-wire uh, refers to an electronic throttle, so we can change how the electronic throttle behaves based on the position of the switch. Maybe at positions one and two, the drive-by-wire throttle is limited to 30% for a valet mode or something like that. And as you go up on the uh, numbers on the switch, we allow more and more throttle. We can change the characteristic of how the throttle might operate in the mid-range, maybe more aggressive in the mid-range um, by changing the numbers in the drive-by-wire compensation table and those numbers would be different for each level of the switch. And often it's used for traction control. In a situation where you have traction control configured, maybe through a drive-by-wire motor or, or through ignition cut, the aggressiveness, is the aggressiveness of the traction control system can be um, altered by altering the position of the switch. So we can have the, the traction control system, the PID control, uh, linked to different numbers on the nine position switch. So it's a very powerful tool. Really, it's almost limitless what you can do with it. it it's just like a driver sensor that, uh, that you can use anywhere through the ECU to do any particular function that suits you. The other thing you can do is it, you can be, it can be used to, to help tuning. And like of boost control, we use it to experiment with different levels uh, or different duty cycles on the boost control solenoid 
And then once we learn what boost makes what duty cycle, we can then quickly uh, change over to closed loop boost. And we have a webinar dedicated to that. And, and again, with traction control, we can learn without having to send the driver out and say, oh, that was good, that was bad, make an adjustment, send them out again, back in, send them out again, keep, keep making adjustments on things like traction control. The driver himself can go out there and make those adjustments on the fly, you know, on the racetrack. And then he can come back in and say, look, when I was on position four, it felt really good. We can then look at the data, look and see what the setting was on position four, and then work towards making that a permanent setting. Okay, and then in the end, he may finally uh, make a permanent setting that just uses the top three numbers of the switch for, you know, let's say a wet race, a uh, dry race, or a, or a um, um, you know, uh, a super lap or a qualifying style lap. So, so the uses are as, as good as your imagination. So wiring is very simple, just like a throttle position sensor or a map sensor. Zero volts on pin one. Pin two on the three pin DTM would be any available analog volt input. And on pin, bar, uh, pin three into the five volt supply. Okay, now I've uh, done a layout here of how you might like to configure your nine position switch or how you might like to use it. Now you could uh, even put a background like this behind the switch itself. And if we have a look here, we've, uh, we actually end up with 10 positions because it has a, a zero position switch. So as an example, we could call this a performance, uh, a performance selector. And in the first two sections here, we'll call it the soft, the soft section. So you may want to run this for when you lend your car to your teenager, or when, when you lend or leave it with the valet uh, to park it. We leave it in these two positions. Maybe your teenager is, uh, is uh, potentially doing some racing, and we can have two different levels of how we uh, allow them to use that. So position one and position two, and the settings throughout the ECU will be very soft. Now you'll see shortly when we configure it, how we're gonna make that happen. And then we might have it when you, you're in control of it, and just for normal street driving, we have one, two, three, four, five different levels of aggressiveness. Now, initially we'll set this channel up to be a boost control, five different levels of boost, but you'll also see we can do other things with the fuel and ignition at the same time. And then maybe when you put your race fuel in, then you go to the track. Don't need to get carried away with laptops. A lot of people aren't laptop savvy necessarily. They just flick it on to position eight for their warm up on the racetrack. And then maybe on the last race, they flick it around to position nine. It runs maximum boost, maximum aggressive ignition and maximum aggressive fueling and uh, must win situation position nine. It's up to you as the tuner to determine what each of these positions do. Okay, you don't have to use it like this, obviously, but it's an example of how you could use those, each of those different numbers. All right, in the ECU setup, uh, if you, the shortcut for this, by the way, is Alt-I. If you're in the ECU manager and you want to get to the input pins where you configure thing, sensors, uh, you can go through the main main uh, channel list, so adjust and sensor setup and input pins. Otherwise, Alt-I will take you straight to the input pin screen. Now, we're going to bring this uh, new switch into a user section. So on our user tab, if you see where I'm pointing the green arrow there, the user tab has eight basically open programmable inputs that we can rename. And I'm into user two and I've configured my nine position switch into AV5. So I select AV5, I first of all select user two, and then I can rename that to, in this case we're calling the, my nine position switch channel is actually called boost comp. And I'll give it an abbreviation which is boost C. So that's anywhere where there isn't room for the ECU to write the full channel name, it will come across as boost C. So that's my boost comp channel. And the boost comp channel, of course, is the nine position switch channel. 
So it's being wired into AV5 and I'm going to do a custom table for it. So I click the custom button and when I click the table over here I get the calibration table comes up. I simply at this point run the switch through each of its different positions and push read value. So if my switch is on position 0, uh, we need to type in these the, the numbers here. Now you can type in anything you like here. You can type in 0, you could go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, anything you want to write down here. We've chosen a percentage style channel, and I like to think of this as percentage of compensation. So in this case, I'm going 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. So on position 0 on the switch, we simply click the read value button, and the voltage automatically comes into the input voltage uh, section here. Now I click to the next position, position 1, click read value, and in comes 0.747 in this particular case, and through you go to all the nine positions, and simply push read value at each level. Simple as that. And then just push OK, and OK, and everything's done. Actually, just prior to pushing OK, one thing to consider here is our diagnostic channels. Now, our uh, in this particular case here, see the lowest value on position 0 is 0 0.27, 0 0.267 volts. And our standard diagnostic low voltage is 0 0.1 volts. So that would be fine. Uh, it would mean that even on position 0, the sensor would not go into error. But if you're making your own switch, at some point you might find the switch go puts out 0 volts. So in that case, you'd want a diagnostic low voltage of maybe even a negative number. Now I've got zero volts entered here. So what that means, that's a, an appropriate voltage for a calibration that looks like this. Up here on the table, my lowest normal voltage is 0.267. So I'm going to know this is an error if it goes below that. So it has to be, my diagnostic low error is zero volts. So if it sees zero volts, it'll flag an error and it will use my default value of zero, which is the safe value. My diagnostic high voltage in this case is six volts. So if you had a switch that maybe on the top setting said five and the bottom setting said zero, you would need the diagnostic low to be a negative number to save it going into error when you were on the lowest setting, and you would need the diagnostic high number to be above five, otherwise it would go into error on the top setting. All right, and you wouldn't want that because when you're on the top setting wanting all the power, the default value would be used if your diagnostic error uh, voltage was our standard, which is 4.9 for memory. hope that makes sense. So, whenever we create a new channel in the ECU, it's a really good thing to get into the habit of logging it. There's no use going and creating, some, uh, creating all this great new stuff in the tune-up Test, the, the test driver going out and uh, saying, oh, gee, it didn't appear to work. You come back in, download the logging, and you can't really see if he was turning the switch or not because you haven't logged it. So we're configuring a user channel up here. So in our data logging setup, we go down to user sensors, and in the user sensors area, you can see that the boost comp channel is there, and we can log it anywhere between 1 and 5 hertz. It doesn't need to be logged any faster than that. Um, as long as we can see that what the driver is doing with the switch. Okay. Now, what would you use this for? Here's the places that you can take that new channel called Boost Comp and use it. So here we have the AIM Boost table. Shortcut for that is F7. And in the AIM Boost table, we can ask the ECU to make uh, certain levels of boost. Now in this example here, I'm in what's called open loop boost mode. So in this mode here, the numbers that we put in the aim boost table are the numbers that the duty of the duty cycle that the solenoid is running. So what this means here, if we have a number of 80 here, that means at this time, whenever the this site is active, the ECU supplies a duty cycle of 80 to the solenoid controlling the boost. Now, depending on 
quite a lot of things depending on the solenoid, depending on how it's wired and depending on the actual boost control system. The higher the number usually means the more the boost. In this case, it definitely does. So if we look at how I've filled this out, for a start we have our boost which is dependent on RPM. And in this case I've kept it simple and kept all the numbers the same. Often you would run, uh, as RPM goes up, you would have different numbers, uh, different boost duty numbers applied. But we'll keep them all the same for now. Now on the left hand or the Y axis here, I've configured the boost, con boost comp channel, which is our nine position switch channel. So normally you just push A for axis or right click on the table and you'll get the axis set up here. And you see I've selected the Y axis tab, go to select here, choose the boost comp channel, and then I can write in my sites that I want to use. So we go back to the sites that we configured and keeping it simple, zero to 100. All right, so we end up with zero to 100 on the vertical axis of the boost, uh, aim boost table. And now as I click the switch from position to position, you'll see the uh, aim number will go up and up each, each time. So if we actually go back to our original layout, we see position 0, 1 and 2 were our soft positions, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 were our street positions and 8 and 9 were our race positions. So now if we look on our boost table, we can see that 8 and 9, these are the numbers that we fill out for when we're in the race positions position 8 and position 9, you see I've got that designated there. So these are the numbers we fill out for our street mode and the numbers we fill out for our soft mode. So when we run, want the thing to run just on the wastegate only, we have a number of 0 there. So our 0 number on our, our 9 position switch means the lowest boost possible. And then as we click the switch up, up comes the uh, extra duty on the solenoid and the boost comes up to suit. Alright, now, as well as, or, or instead of, either way, we can actually choose to do something with the ignition. Now in this case, I'm using the Ignition Comp 2 table. So if you see on the uh, tree here, Ignition, Compensations, we have a second Comp channel, a uh, second Comp table, and on this Compensation table, we've put the Boost, again, the Boost Comp axis. So each of these represents each position on the switch. And on uh, our position 0 and 1, I've chosen I'll write on 0, this is a super safe mode, I'm pulling out 5 degrees. And on position 1, I'm adding a couple more, but still 3 degrees out from where my street tune is. All through my street tune, which is the tune I use for driving around the street, for example, I have no compensation, no extra ignition in or out. So in other words, just using the main ignition map. And then when I'm at the racetrack and I've got the better fuel or, or I'm um, yeah, wanting to go faster, beat my mate who's next to me at the lights, however it works, I can go to position, this position here adds 3 degrees and this position here adds 5 degrees. So that's 5 degrees overall trim of the ignition. Okay, now this can happen at this, it's not instead of the other boost uh, compensation. This happens as well as. So as well as the boost going up, we're also potentially for the race adding ignition. Obviously you choose sensible numbers here that are not going to damage the engine. Alright, now here we have the uh, another compensation that you could do and that's fueling. So, and this is a 3D table, so in this case I'm using the fuel compensations comp 1 of the fuel fuel compensation um, choices. Comp 1 is a 3D table and what this allows us to do is absolutely target where we want fuel in or out depending on the switch. So in this case I've put the axis for the boost comp switch, our 9 position switch, across the, the horizontal axis here. So depending on where the switch is will depend on what happens with the fueling. So this adds or subtracts uh, fuel to the main, uh, main pulse width. 
but you can see here that I'm only doing that at certain uh, manifold pressure values, so under boost. So if we are down on a safe setting, I, you can see as an example, I'm adding 2% more fuel at 180 kPa, 6% fuel at 200 kPa, 10% fuel at 250 kPa, and if for some reason it manages to get all the way to 300 kPa, I'm adding 15% fuel. So even if uh, somehow the boost control system fails and it overboosts, we've got super safe fueling, and on the previous screen, super safe ignition as well. All right, and all of my normal street driving has my normal, no extra or fuel or less fuel here. And for racing, often if, you, if you've got good fuel and you've got the engine well tuned, sometimes you might want to dial in that extra boost and maybe dial out a little bit of fuel to help the engine respond better. But you'll notice in this example, from 200 to 250, I'm pulling a little bit of fuel out. But I might have, might have decided at 300, I need to keep it safe. So if it goes to 300 kPa, then I, I've, uh, that extra fuel I pulled out, I've put back in again. Okay, so you can see it, it can be used for almost anything. Here's another example where we're actually using it for uh, controlling the throttle. Now this is almost as good as controlling the boost. And maybe you haven't got a turbo engine, but you want to remove the power from the engine uh, quite dramatically without having to use RPM limits or anything like that. Now, uh, again, you can see here across the horizontal axis, I have my TPD. Now, this is the driver request from an electronic throttle car. So this would be the pedal in a race car, or say a late model Commodore. So wherever the driver puts his foot at 40%, foot position, this number is how much throttle he gets. So this is almost a one-to-one -one table. So if the driver asks for 60%, we are, in this table, giving him 60% throttle. So this is the table that the ECU uses to tell the butterfly and the throttle body where, where to go. Now, because we've got a three-dimensional table here, we can put another axis on it. The vertical axis, or the y-axis here, is again our boost comp channel, which is our nine position switch channel. So as we click the switch through its numbers, the uh, ECU goes up and down to these different levels. So if we just look at position zero here, we can see at 15% driver request, we get 15% throttle. At 40% driver request, we're actually only getting 30% throttle. And even if the driver goes all the way flat out, nails the pedal to the floor, still only gets 30%. So very good for likes of valet mode and things like that where you don't want whoever's driving it to um, hurt your uh, flash rate race engine, whatever reason you want. Now you can actually do the same thing with this, ch this boost comp channel on the RPM limit as well. You could actually put that on the RPM limit table and have the RPM limit go up and down depending on where the switch is. Again, you can really see the advantages of having a switch like this and the kinds of things you can do with it. It is up to you. All right, thanks for attending to today. Uh, immediately following this, I'm actually going to do a live presentation of this, and if this goes fine, then um, we should be able to uh, see some of the stuff live on the ECU. Uh, otherwise, um, thanks for attending, and we'll see you next time. Okay, let me just uh, switch live here. Sometimes live presentations can be a little slow, and we're going to give it a go today. So um, just change over and share my screen that I have got live now. Just bear with me. Picture, in fact, the live screen. I've got an ECU uh, hooked up to a... Uh, what we call a, an electronic engine. It's a simulator. And you can see a typical screen shot here of an engine running at 2,500 revs. Now, because I can configure that screen to look any way I like, uh, I've got another selection over here of, some, of a layout that shows everything that's happening relative to what we've been speaking about today. So... 
the first thing I wanted to show you was that calibration live. So if I press Alt-I here, the input screen pops up. And I'll go across to the user in, input put, um, section, down to boost our determined boost comp channel, and double click on it. I can see the uh, calibration part turn up. Click on table and just pull that to one side and now I can move I've actually got a nine position switch hooked up to the simulator here and I'm on position one uh, sorry position zero which you can't see but it's sitting on position zero and so I write zero there and I read the value watch what happens when I click the read value button you see that updated to 0.268 I'll go to position one on the switch Highlight it here, read value. Next one, change on the switch, read value. All right, so go through and do all of those. I'm going to click OK to that, and OK, and OK, and the ECU will reset. All right, now you can see here I have the aim boost table which is uh, uh, shortcut for that is actually F7. So if I push the space bar, the adjust site goes to wherever the current um, engine site is. So the engine is currently at 2,500 revs, if you see there. And here's our boost comp channel that I've configured. Now I'm going to switch through each position, and you can see the little target moving as I click through the nine positions. Now also, if you have a look down here, I have configured Boost Aim underneath as a chart recorder. So this is showing me the Boost Aim duty, which is effectively the numbers here, but I can see them moving in a much nicer way. So as I lower the switch here, you see the Boost Aim value going down. Also underneath that, I can show you the Fuel Comp 1 channel and Fuel Comp 2 channels. I bought onto another chart recorder. And you can see that as again as I move the switch up and down through the range, here we are at position seven, and both the fuel and emission comp are zero. And as I go to position eight, you'll recall we pulled out, uh, we're pulling out five percent fuel, and position nine, we're adding three degrees of ignition and five degrees, uh, sorry, five percent fuel out. And again, also we have, uh, I've displayed here the actual fuel pulse width at the injector. This is really the, the, the final step. This is what the injector is doing, how long it's opening for in milliseconds, and the ignition, the live ignition value for that map reading we've got at the moment. So if I was to alter the, the map sensor reading here, you can see I have, a uh, ch again, a chart recorder showing the map sensor uh, pressure and the manifold pressure reading underneath is a numeric value. And as that's moving up and down, you can see the ignition moving up and down. Okay, and then just by moving my switch up and down, you can see the different, different things that are happening inside the ECU. So it's a way of programming on the fly. All right, so that's just a little demo to show you uh, that happening live. Hope that was uh, of some use. And... Um, yeah, hopefully we'll catch you next time.